Welcome to the New Money Rules Show. I'm your host, the freedom investor, Kyron Goss. During this show, we're going to be looking at how the ever-changing world of money, business, and property is starting to evolve. My guest today is Lawrence Lotz, aka the Wolf of Queen Street. Lawrence, welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'd love to really get started um, with the name, the Wolf of Queen Street, right? Mm-hmm. So, so you run you run a, a podcast, and, and one of your claims to fame is uh, that for one week you uh, you <laughs> outranked Gary V. <laughs> um, but I mean, the Wolf of Queen Street, the name obviously rings bells, really relates it back to New Zealand, but. Where did it come from and what inspired you to start the podcast in the first place? Yeah, so it, what inspired me to start a podcast, let's go to that on, let's on to that one first, is I've always had a sort of a knack over the last sort of 10 years realizing I can handle conversations with people in the most random of topics. I was always known as the person of like random knowledge. I know you're well aware, like we all go down rabbit holes of just most random topic here and topic there and, and realizing like, hey, I can handle conversation and I can um, talk to people on all different areas. And sort of before 2019, 2018, I was looking more into it and seeing what I could do different with, I wanted to start something with my life at that stage. Uh, and the podcasting was sort of more getting bigger. It was, well, it was well in its ways, but not as big in the New Zealand sense. So that's where I thought, oh, cool, maybe I should start a podcast, um, thought pattern around 2018, 2019. But I was still at that um, before my medical condition that happened to me and everything else. I was still this really egotistical arsehole, really, that only cared about myself. So I looked and going, hey, what what do I want to be from a podcast guest or host? Um, I want to be like Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. I want to be famous like him and rich like him and have all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm married, so not all the stuff, right? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that's where I knocked off and I made the name the Wolf of Queen Street. My original thumbnail was me in a white suit standing like this. In, it was actually taken in Vegas, uh, the original like this, like the success, and then had the Auckland City backdrop was the original thumbnail. So that's where the, the, the name built up because I wanted to launch that and just have this major – brand of interviewing the top people in the world and sort of just craving for myself. But that was the the fundamentals of why I want to get into the podcast and then the, the name from it. But it's a lot different to where it is today, though. That, that's fascinating. But what I find really interesting was you wanted to emulate the Wolf of Wall Street, yet he went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can only say all I know about him is, um, is the actual movie, yeah. right? <laughs> but yeah, he ended up in jail. He was like <laughs> the craziest drugs you've ever heard. I uh, did his marriage. His marriage broke up. Didn't oh, it? multiple. Oh, multiple. <laughs> and it's like, is this, is this really the life you but, want? Oh, but I mean, if if you understood my mindset, I had at that stage, right? Um, you know, you would have seen small glimmers of it when we originally met. I, I still had it overlapping from. Before my medical condition and things like that, and anyone's interested can go and see in my in my story. But I was that egotistical and arsehole guy that to me that looked like success and everything. I didn't look, I didn't think about it like you look now. Going, he had all of that, but he had tick boxes of all the biggest failures you can have, like going to jail, multiple marriages, been chased by the FBI, and everything else. And but to me, it was like, oh, that's the status of success. What I perceived, and it was like, oh, that's what I want to to look like or to be like. Um, And then I started, obviously, the brand and the business behind it. And once I got into three, six, nine months on the path, you can't then just go, cool, I'm going to change my my company name or change the brand name. I started working and then I've just pivoted to where it is today and it um, still resonates resonates differently to me now compared to that. And it's a fun fun story. It's definitely a fun story. But what I find interesting is is this is something that – a lot of people actually go through. Mm-hmm. Like if you think um, what I call level one, which is, you know, sort of the, you, you've got a good steady job. But if you think about wealth, you actually think about the word rich. Yeah. And to me, the two are completely different, mm-hmm. right? Like I would see Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, as, as being rich. Yeah. And that's where almost, you know, the, the new money where it's just bing, yeah. bing, bing, <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Um, you know, you, you, you don't actually know what to do with it. Like you, you've come from nothing or you've come from little, you've all of a sudden got all this money, but you don't know what to do with it. So you're out doing, you know, the craziest drugs you can find or whatever (laughs) whores and strippers and, you know, all of that, because that's people's definition Mm. of rich. But when you actually transfer that over to the word wealth, Different thing, right? Completely yeah. different. Completely different. So then, um, so from the back of the, the podcast, you've interviewed 
How many episodes have you done today? To- uh, a long form, about 95. Short form, about another 80. So I'm just under 200, close to 200 in both formats of the podcast. Yeah. So you've interviewed well over 100 of New Zealand and the, probably the world's best business people, um, entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. people who dif- think differently. So how much would you say that through the conversations you have on your podcast actually directly affect the way you think about you know, the difference, for example, between rich and wealth or the, how, how much of an impact has that had on your life and the way your journey's gone? Yeah, a, a really great question there because I know it depends what you're trying to get out of the, the show as well. And this is where sort of I had to learn as the podcast was going because originally it just started and it was myself and whatever the guests and we were just shooting the shit. So I'd go, hey, Karen, come on the show and we'd talk for an hour and I wouldn't really think much of it. So I'd learn a little bit about yourself and a few other pieces, but there wasn't as in depth or pushing the limits as much as it is today. Um, and then realizing through that process that that was great for me meeting these amazing people, but for anyone else in my audience, they didn't get enough. They didn't get a deep enough dive within the show. And that's where I had to go more into it and going, okay, what, what actually does my audience want to learn from it? right? Or what do they want to take from it? So I need to deep dive for this individual um, male or female business owner or startup or whatever it is and get into that space. And then from doing that, my audience resonated more. But actually for me, I learned more about the about the person and learned what made them tick and what made them successful in the, in the area. And then also helped me think about, cool, does that work for my business or my brand or my thought pattern and stuff like that to how I can change and then try and look at with that and resonate with what they're trying to achieve as well or what they have achieved. Yeah, cool. The reason why I bring this up is um, if we talk about traditional money rules, like Mm -hmm. if you want to learn something, like if you wanted to learn from one of the best out there, you'd have to go pay money, do a course, whatever, Mm -hmm. right? But actually within, within what you do by running your podcast, you're actually now getting paid to connect and learn from some of the best business minds out there, yep. which is just a, a complete 180 flip of how the traditional model has has worked. And how much of your original shows were more just, you already knew the topic, you were just trying to get your guests to explain it for your, your audience mm-hmm. versus actually, I want to learn this stuff, so I'm going to bring on the person I want to learn from, and hopefully my audience wants to learn from that them as well. Um, yeah, so originally, yeah, so originally in the beginning, it was more bringing on a big guest and and, and having that discussion um, and seeing what there was out there, and definitely the thought pattern changed to where now is like more of, like you said, is more of what I want to know as well, but also my audience. So sometimes I've also realized that it's, I don't have to have all the celebrity guests on to get what I need to get. Um, there's individual people out there that have the right knowledge that I'm interested about, and they might not be famous, they might not be on social media and everything else. So that's also one of the big things was going, I need the right male or female business owner on the other side to give me and my audience an irrespective of where they are on the social media spectrum, let's say that. Because in the beginning it was like, okay, how big can I get? How, how successful yeah. can I get them there? Because I thought that would make it automatically a success and that doesn't mean anything. Like I can go and interview um, our head politicians in New Zealand and it would make no difference to the show. I might have people throw tomatoes at me, but <laughs> but I'm saying that's not going to make it go viral tomorrow. People are more interested in actually um, getting something from it that resonates to them. So whether it's knowledge about money or wealth or property, um, and that's where the right person saying the right message is more important than a famous person saying a partial message. That's really cool, and I think that's a massive aha moment for mm-hmm. a lot of people, right? But if if you sit down and you actually think about it, all the big names out there, like, I mean, like, let's say, you know, we talk about Grant Cardone a lot, right? Mm-hmm. If you were to interview Grant Cardone, well, he's already done so many other interviews, and he's already all over social media. I do, I would question how much new information I'd get from that, although, you know, it'd be epic for you to, to do that. I. Yeah, I'd look at totally agree with that. I've been asked if I'd had if I would have Jordan Belfort on my show. Yeah, I've been asked this multiple times before off air if I if, if I could would I have him on my show, and I've come out and said I would uh, I would love to have a chat with him for me only. Yeah, I don't believe anything that I could interview him would be an actual benefit to my audience because what he has done already from his content, just like Grant Cardone, yeah. already exists and. 
Gronkadon, I could go a couple of smaller pieces. I could maybe pull out of him that might be more specific because he's very American-based and we could I could curveball him with examples out of the New Zealand or Australian market to be a bit different. But that's why sometimes even the bigger names, everything they've done is already out there. So why be... Why bring them on and just have another vanilla episode or vanilla yeah. interview? And the audience comes back and goes, "Cool, you had that guy on, but but I already knew all of that stuff." Yeah. So so I guess really, you're almost doing a service where you're going out and you're finding these people who have the great ideas, but you're amplifying their message, new messages, new things people mm-hmm. need to hear, and new things you need to hear as well. It's yep. kind of like what TED Talks do as well, right? Many of the people I've seen on TED just. They're not someone famous, yep. but their idea and their new way of thinking or whatever is just genius. Uh, it is. It is a weird uh, – I totally it is. I mean, the, one of the coolest um, TED Talks I remember, con, I remember the moment that the guy did it, and I, I can't remember the guest name or anything else. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it was the one where the guy was standing um, on the stage and he jumps and he, and he made a sound, a note, and he went beep. And he, and he and jumps, he goes, beep, beep, beep. And then he jumps on to the next step and he goes higher with his notes. I'm not going to try this because I haven't got a really good. But he went higher with the next note on the next stop. And then he jumped back and forth and he went like lower, higher, lower, higher. And then he went lower and he jumped to the higher one and he jumped to the third one and didn't say anything. And he, But he was making the, the audience go the same noise with him and going back and forth. And he jumped the third one up and automatically the crowd just went higher and made the noise. And he said, and then he stopped and went, I didn't tell you to do that. Why did you do that? And then he went into the whole human psychology side of things. And everyone was just like, holy cow, such a simple example from like a TED talk. And then he could build his whole story behind that. And yeah, and he wasn't, I mean, he got famous from that, from that, uh, from that stint. But again, it was something totally different, not expecting, but gave them the learnings they they didn't realize they needed. Oh, I haven't seen that one, but I'm oh, going to have to go search for it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I would consider you sort of my mentor or or at least, you know, advising me around <laughs> social media and that side. You know, you're, you're part of my network and, <laughs> and really helping on that side. But why do you think... In in a world where um social media and especially right now there's there's a lot of hate against Facebook and yep. Meta's Meta's prices have just dropped. Yep. We're moving over towards virtual reality and and the metaverse and all of that. Yet you 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 and I you know we still see social media as being so important. What is it about that foundation of social media that you you see that you love so much that you stay awake until 2 a.m doing <laughs> doing this sort of thing right or getting up at 3 a.m to the interview an american yeah. why do you think it's so important and where do you think society's gone wrong that we have such a bad view on it I, oh that's real interesting because there's different views of the way depending where you sit in the world okay in the american market at the moment there's a massive despise against tiktok because TikTok's Chinese owned and they're worried about your data and your privacy and all the rest of the information. Yet every single big celebrity, influencer, money man, business owner in America is on TikTok themselves. But yet they will say, no, 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 it needs to be shut down because of all the rest of it. Um, also, um, the views of Facebook and Meta, um, the privacy concerns they've had, they've been sued and having to pay out. And a lot of people are looking at them and not having, they're having this bad view of Facebook, again, out of the American space and a little bit out of the European space. But the other side of the world, people are just like, hey, it's still there. Social media is still going to be part of our world for years to come. It might um, pivot or evolve like to the metaverse and things like that. But this is the fundamental way of how we communicate uh, and talk and interact with people at the moment. So to me, I still see there's a major play in any business or brand out there right now and at least for five to seven or eight years because until someone th- brings in a curveball, which I can't see, that it will totally disrupt it because how can we – change the way we communicate other than instantly and video wise and I can see my celebrity or I can see the see my mentor or I can see someone I want to interact with straight away on a device. What we might see is different platforms, applications and places. Um, Twitter's going through a massive 
up and down at the moment. <laughs> Let's just say that. Well, uh, we, we were actually talking about this um, off air. Um, but if you look at what Elon's actually trying to do with Twitter, because, yeah, it has been an absolute <laughs> debacle, but I just don't think he's um, portrayed his vision or message across. He, he almost wants to create the, the one app to rule them all, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, just like WeChat in China, and, and he wants to be able to do that with blockchain, crypto mm-hmm. payments, um, blockchain voting, yeah. and, and to create a, a true democracy, not a representative <laughs> democracy. But, yeah, he's done a horrible job at portraying his vision. But I mean, yeah. I'm not. A, no, most non-Americans aren't on Twitter anyway, yeah. so that's their problem. <laughs> yeah. So coming back to from a social media point of view, yeah. So that's why it's the biggest player. Like especially um, in New Zealand, where I mean, we five million. I think the population at the moment is. Uh, we just crossed over eight billion this week. I, I'm, yep. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Yep. The eighth billionth baby. Um, I don't know if they've pinpointed the exact baby because it's quite hard. So, so they can't, but they they um, they, they, they did one in a M- Manila in Philippines. Yeah. So they nominated that as the eight, the eight, eight billion, billion, the eight yeah. billion baby, right? Um, so you got to remember that in a population of five million people, how are you going to try and achieve or reach out to an audience of eight billion people? Um, from a small business at home, from whichever company you're doing, from a podcast, other than utilizing the services out there from a social media, also. Every social platform outside of blue ticks on Twitter is free, right? <laughs> so me going in front of a camera, and this is the old stool. This was the old Gary V of even ten years ago, right? Of me taking my cell phone, and cell phones were horrible ten years ago. Going onto a video and going, "Hey, this is Lawrence Lotz. I hope you can come over and enjoy my content. Here's my education. Costs nothing." Yeah, um, and that's where the 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 uh, and this is where it became exceptionally partially saturated due to COVID, though. So before COVID, um, people that were willing to get in the game and social media, produce content and provide the education, business models were just growing drastically like you couldn't believe. And then COVID hit and everyone sat at home and bored. So we all had um, quiz nights. You know, we all did quiz nights at home, um, you know, boot camps, not me. Um, <laughs> and then people got and started businesses online or just doing yep. started got into the TikTok game and then realized, when, oh, I can be quirky on TikTok or, or I can make a business. And then one video went viral and now they got consumed in that world of creating more content um, and growing from that. But – being viral on social media is different to being successful on social media because – That's a very the, good point. Yeah. yeah, so even uh, – Mr. Beast, which everyone knows, was talking the other day about his TikTok payments, and it was like Mr. Beast. He made like he's made a couple of thousand dollars on TikTok. Mr. Beast, yeah, the yeah, guy that makes yeah, yeah, yeah. fifty million a year on YouTube has only made a couple of thousand on TikTok because of the ROI. The is it fifty or sixty percent TikTok takes for every dollar you earn? Yeah, it's exceptionally high. Um, but you can have potential to go more viral. So that's when the smart comes in with people on social media is if you're on the TikTok space, you got to redirect them to some other platform where your ROI from a money or invest or money or return is a lot higher. It's probably a really good point because as we are talking about how you make money from social media and that side, even Mr. Beast with his 50 million a year, most of that doesn't actually come from YouTube. No, uh, Mr. Beast is a real interesting example. You know that he had to go to financial investors to give him money to keep him going, right? Because he spends as much money as he earns on his video. So he's a little bit of a um, – and that's why he's so massive. I think he spends a couple of million on each video that he makes, and he doesn't definitely make that return. But just for example, for people wanting to understand on the YouTube side, on the average, you can make about $10,000 US per million views if you're monetized. So if you do if you if you Tay Tay Taylor Swift and you do twenty million you do twenty million views in your latest song you're making about two hundred thousand USD from that YouTube video alone. YouTube still takes their cut and then you get your whatever your hundred hundred twenty hundred forty thousand dollars off that. That's a lot of money to most people. It's more than most people's annual salary. But she's also one of the biggest art in the world. Most mm-hmm. content creators on YouTube are making the five bucks, twenty bucks, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars a month. Um, and that's realistically where they'll stay in the space because it's such a big market. But there's so many other spaces to make money in social in that in in that bucket of social media or content. Yeah, and, and this is where it gets interesting because yeah, two hundred thousand probably doesn't make a difference to Taylor Swift, yeah. right? But then once you get in that position, it's it's about capturing eyeballs. Correct. Um, and the biggest sort of the biggest spaces of where you can make money on capturing eyeballs is. You get obviously your your YouTube. There's the revenue side, but also capturing eyeballs. If you can again, 
like I said, from the TikTok, you've got to figure out where can I make my biggest return and then send those eyeballs that way. So TikTok, you can get the most eyeballs, but it doesn't pay you the most. YouTube gives you a decent amount, but again, doesn't pay you the most. Google ads on a website will actually likely pay you more. Because it's a static image, as soon as someone lands on your homepage, static response, and then it's an ad payment. Compared to YouTube, where it's skippable. Unless, so unless someone watches yeah. the skippable video, you're not getting paid for that. So if, if you can send someone down the path of understanding where's the biggest return for yourself, and you can shift them along that successfully, your return could be higher and make more money on your website, for example, compared to your YouTube, again, compared to TikTok. Yes. Yes. So all of those people who are going out, they're going like, well, I, I want to get something on, on YouTube or, you mm. know, I want to get monetized or whatever. Yep. That's actually not the point then. <sighs> it's not the main point. Yeah. It's not that, look, you want to be, be monetized on YouTube to protect yourself if you go viral. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one big thing, right? Um, so four, five. I'm going to get my years wrong. But uh, four or five years ago, before that, you could be monetized as soon as you had 100 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. So as soon as you had 100 subscribers, you could be monetized and you're making cents on the dollar from day one. My daughter's channel that has been going for about five or six years was earning already at that stage and she's, her channel is still bigger than mine, which is still, <laughs> still pisses me off. Um, but yeah, but now because of the new uh, – but then what happened is the ads, the ad agencies didn't realize, but hold on, we don't want to put our ads on some shitty channel that doesn't really produce any great quality content. And that's why they brought that rule set in that it's a thousand subscribers, four thousand hours within twelve months, and then you monetize, so that the ads can then go on quality content. Um, but yeah, you want to become monetized. So in case one video, uh, for example, one of your videos that you had about the future cities <laughs> that did, you know, a couple of hundred thousand or you know, like a yeah. hundred or hundred fifty thousand thousand views for our channel size, that's pretty big, right? Compared to yeah. most videos, yes. which at the time it was lucky to get five hundred. Yeah. So I'm saying, so imagine if you're monetized on your hundred fifty thousand view, it's not going to be massive, but that could be a couple of hundred dollars yeah. in the pocket for that one video. So that's why I said a lot of people try to get monetized. I try to get monetized to protect yourself from that. But that's not the main direction from your revenue. Your revenue is in other places, websites. And also a big thing is revenue is not actually just cash. There's other ways you can earn or get stuff from being in social media or content creation other than actual money in your bank. So now are you talking about the um, the shitty influencers who go out to hotels and say, give me a room for a week and I'll... Uh... Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. But... <laughs> so, so what are you talking about? Um, so I'm talking about there's other, there's other benefits as well that in our day-to-day -day lives that we need that is purchased by money, but we can get it if someone does it. So a merch is one of the big ones, right? Merch, so yeah. um, anyone that uh, watches or follows my show, I've always got a sort of set attire. I love my hats. Um, at the moment, I'm wearing one from Better Than Before. Um, I'm company I'm part of as well, but also um, supplying me with merch. Um, for about two years, there was another company called NKDU Apparel out of Australia that supplied me all my merch for over two years on the, on the podcast. So to me, it wasn't cash money, but it was clothing which yeah. I would have had to spend cash on anyway. So literally two-thirds of my wardrobe that I owned was paid for by other companies. It wasn't paid for for me to be part of that. So there's different other areas out there at the moment. Uh, there's, there's clothing, there's food, um, get the, the food, there's vehicles. As people get bigger and that, you'll see all our super uppy and um, sports stars driving around in a – um, a Toyota Hilux that's branded by BNZ or something else, that's then given to them from a sponsor and said, hey, here's a car to use. They don't have to pay for it. Everything's covered. They don't get the money, but they get a car to use. So there's so much more in that pipeline that's other than physical cash. Which is really interesting because uh, one of the, the strategies that I use is obviously how do we – how do, how do we offset our, our expenses, right? Mm -hmm. And so typically we do that for investing. But yeah, if, if you're able to get given free clothes, well, that saves. Yep. And, and as long as you're still putting your clothing budget now into your wealth account yep. to, to invest, then epic. And I actually remember Dom Harvey, you know, with, <laughs> with you know, runners only. Yep. And I, I think he'd barely been up a month. And yeah, someone gave him a car. Well, didn't give him a car, you know, gave him the, the use of the car, yep. um, branded with his podcast and everything. And I'm like... You, you wait ever, wait you a minute. You, ever, you obviously haven't seen what happened the last few days. Oh, no, so I haven't. So Allbirds sent him a package. 
So obviously, oh, Dom, uh, Dom has just been recently on my show over the last good few weeks, and just um, on the day of this recording, just a few days before this, um, yeah, he's got a, a full Allbirds package just arrived to his place. Um, oh, now I'm going like, to have to ask you the dumb question: What is Allbirds? Um, so Allbirds is one. Uh, it is Allbirds. Now, hopefully, I got that right. Yeah. So Allbirds is a New Zealand company based out of America, where they make the, all their clothing. They were shoe, they shoe company originally, and they do with a wider merch. And I'm, I might get this wrong, but they make most of their shoes out of, is it merino wool? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah but it's like really comfy, yeah, yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah. high quality sh- uh, New Zealand wool shoes. They look the part as well. So they don't look like um, those stupid big Ugg boot things, uh, you know, the fluffies <laughs> in the top, right? That everyone thinks that Kiwis or Aussies wear, right? Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there, there was one time in Kalgoorlie where I literally saw, you know, jumped out. She had the, um, the durry in her mouth. She had the two-year-old on the hip. She had the fluorescent green Ugg boots. So they, those people do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So um, I just saw recently, yeah, he got sent a massive pack and then uh, I saw from that that it was like it would be amazing for them to come and sponsor the show um and that's you know that comes in that whole circle of it's it could be goods it could be business deals it could be opening doors um it could be products uh for a, uh, for a while um dark art grooming company which is owned by a guy called gareth edwards in auckland yeah he um he also was a sponsor and he supplied me uh, men's cleaning uh, face products and beard products and that's the way that he could yeah. help uh, and send me a pack every month as part of but, that as but well for some reason he didn't send you one back in january hey yeah when i, when I was growing up my, when i was trying to grow out a beard yeah yeah, yeah yeah that was a bit of a interesting time you always got that sort of stunt you're going to go okay let's look a little bit different social media let's see if i can grow a beard no i <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so, so this is then, I guess, where it gets really interesting because you got okay. So, so we're able to offset some of our our costs. We're able yep. to get merch, but um, at, at what cost, right? Like, okay, we're not paying money, but are we selling our souls? How do you how do you drive this whole sub uh, this whole sponsorship side or, or freebie side around something that still aligns with you? Mm-hmm. You know, if if, if I don't know. Again, coming back to, I don't smoke, so I'm going to pick on the cigarette companies. Yeah. But if they came along and said, "Karen, we want you to, you know, smoke cigarettes, and we're going to give you lifetime free cigarettes," like, yes. no, thank you. Yeah. So obviously, if you get to that point, you've obviously pretty successful because you've got companies approaching that. Um, in New Zealand itself, it's quite hard to get larger companies to come on board to you as a brand, as a small one-stop shop, unless you've come through a celebrity status or you've come off the radio, if you come off TV or if you're a sports star, um, to come down because you've already built that status somewhere else. Um, oh, coming okay. uh, coming up in uh, in the podcast world, the content creation world, like you and me, just to walk into ASB and say, "Hey, ASB, I'd love for you to sponsor me with a a brand new car." They're going to look at me like, <laughs> <laughs> "What are you talking about?" Um, but the, it does it does slowly happen and build up, but yeah, you, as I go through mine, I've got to look at what resonates truly with me. Some people are driven by I used to be one of them by the money. So four years ago, I wouldn't care who came to me to say I want to sponsor you. If they said they gave me enough money, I would wear, do, drink, smoke, whatever on camera if I was getting the money. To me now, nah, that doesn't resonate doesn't resonate with me, and therefore I'll make sure that there's alignment of what's going on. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, so coming through to it then, um, we've talked about sponsorship. We've mm-hmm. talked about ad revenue. What other ways are there through making money through social media? Can I go back to sponsorship a little bit quickly? Because yeah, yeah. one of the biggest questions I have um, in, in sponsorship or to anyone is how to get a sponsor. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So this, I, I thought they just rock up and knock on your door and say, Lawrence, here, wear my T-shirts here to shave oh, my okay. things. <laughs> yeah, okay, that does happen, but the, the 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 non-monetary sponsors come across easier than the actual monetary sponsors. Okay. So go into a company and go, hey, I want $300, $400, $500, $1,000 an episode, or Joe Rogan, $70,000 a, a sponsor segment. A good few years ago, he was being paid seventy grand per sponsor, and you think he had about 10 before the show even started oh wow right he sponsored intros used to be about seven minutes long um yeah so that's where a lot of people come goes how do i get into the first time so i've got a human i've got a weird human psychology trick that i've used in a lot of my um students or people that come into my circle i've utilized as well and it's a weird one but it seems to have worked the human psychology trick is um any guy or girl 
or what any human i prefer using human otherwise i offend someone in society today any human when you're looking I for have no problem offending <laughs> people you know that about me <laughs> so any human when he's looking when they are looking for a partner um some stage struggles to find a partner okay as soon as they find a partner that is reigning people that are yeah. interested in them right yeah. we've all been in that situation um majority of the time like you can't find something and as soon as you find something it's all available and it's there yeah. for you to utilize or take or whatever whether it's finding a partner it's finding a car like oh i want to buy a car as soon as you buy your car every other one every other person has the same car as you right <laughs> so in that same manner as getting your getting your first sponsor is as e uh, getting your second sponsor is as easy as soon as you get your first one yeah and sometimes getting your first one isn't to get the first one isn't to get the monetary is to get a deal or a business deal or an agreement deal going, hey, company A, if I mention your name and you want to give me and you be my sponsor for my show for three or six months or five episodes, something like that, is there a business deal we can work out? Is there something you can open doors for me or can you introduce me to people, not necessarily driv driving them towards monetary or benefits yeah. value? Yeah. And then as soon as you get into that, and people see that, hold on, this brand has a sponsor. It's quite weird. Other companies look back and go, there must be value. Because if yeah. someone else yeah. is on board, there must be value. And as soon as you get from one sponsor to your second sponsor and you start utilizing and slowly building up, then you can get into the monetary space of going to a company going, hey, by the way, I'm currently out of my sponsor. This person, this person, this person, they've been in sponsored um, in me. I've been sponsored my show. Are you interested? And now you can go into your first step of monetary. And it can be as simple as going to a company going, oh, are you willing to pay $20 an episode, $30? My first cash sponsors was 20 bucks an episode, Yeah, right? And it, that's not going to change my life. But, but I can challenge now, I can go around from $500 to $1,000 an episode. And that, if I'm producing one a week, can change a decent chunk of my life. I mean, a thousand bucks a week for some people, that's, that's, I mean, yep. it's not passive income, right? But it's, it's quit your job and yeah. actually do this yeah, full time. Pretty much. It, I love how you say that because that's actually the same with, with business. Mm -hmm. The first job is just get your first customer, yeah. right? Don't get, get money, but don't try to charge full price. Just yeah. do whatever you have to do to get that first customer yeah. because one, that's going to prove that they actually want your product, mm -hmm. that they're willing to pay for your product. And two, it gives you the confidence anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, totally. Um, and, then once that, and then once that starts rolling, it just builds off itself. But, and, and then again, depending on the model you use around your, your sponsorship or your, your deals that you do around your social media, is once you go down the path, you get smarter, so you go longer. So you go, instead of going, okay, I want it per episode, you go, okay, I want it 20 episodes, or I want it six months, or I want it 12 months, because then it gives the person security as well. So it gives the brand, mm. cool, I've got someone looking after me for six, nine, or 12 months. And then you get really, really smart, and you make sure that that sponsorship is not a sole sponsorship. So they are they can sponsor you, but you can still get other brands on top of it. So that means that you know they've at least got a foundation for six or nine months. But if someone else comes knocking, they can come on top of that, and they can come on top of that, and you can build it up so that you can go three, four, five sponsors deep. When you get to that point, you've got to be really careful about not being on a show like Joe Rogan and seven and a half minutes of your intro is just sponsors, but he's such yeah. a great show that people just skip past it usually, and then they go and listen to the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah, and I mean exactly the same as YouTube ads, right? <laughs> it's skip. So this, this is really cool and fascinating then because what you've done is you've been able to build – Build, I guess, an almost an, an education fund where you're out, you're you're talking to these these great business minds, you're learning, um, you're building potential business partnerships, mm -hmm. other connections, being connected in with some of the greatest people. You're getting paid for it through the actual monetization of the platform. Yep. You're getting sponsorship on top of that. Then you're getting merch, mm -hmm. um, which starts to really decrease the actual physical costs mm -hmm. and not to get into accounting or anything, but I imagine there's no tax on getting given merch or anything, <laughs> right? It's just a freebie. Um, so, so now you've almost built what, what we call um, gold dust, right? Yep. Is, is, is how you actually, in this case, advertise in a way that you get paid for advertising and marketing, mm -hmm. except you're just on your journey where you're trying to build yourself up. 
Uh, totally true. Um, um, yeah, so once you get to that point that there's there's enough of the circular going around, there's enough of this wealth wheel moving around yourself, is you can get to that next layer, and that's where sort of the brands that might have taken years to get to that point or been very lucky and viral and gotten there very quickly, is you can then spend – so this is when you can then spend some of this money – to bring more of that money back in, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, for example, um, um, a, a person I'm going to have on my show, oh, um, Joseph Rakic, um, he's spent millions and millions of dollars on his advertising. He's one of the biggest online personal trainers in the world based in, out of Auckland, New Zealand. I think it's 160 clients he's got worldwide um, and sp- he's spoken about spending multi-million dollars of advertising. But by spending all of that, he's been able to get 160,000 clients. Right, so it's like okay, as that comes in and it gives me enough, I can take a little bit of it and grow. Yeah, and by running um, ads, marketing, something else. But as long as you do it in the right manner, your ROI. So if I spend a hundred bucks and I get three hundred dollars for every hundred dollars I spend, just keep going. And there's companies out there that if you can show them a certain percentage of return on any dollar. They will spend every last spend yeah. cent they have in their company just to keep that wheel going and wheel yeah. going and wheel going, right? Um, Dollar Shave Club was one of those. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And then there's also that New Zealand company, right? Who paid Kim Kardashian. No. So um, I always pronounce her name wrong and apologize if anyone knows her personally. I, Ailu, Ailu Liu paid Kylie Jenner $350,000 oh. for the waist trainer that she had. Um, the, it was called Waste Trainer NZ. I don't believe she still owns the company. I think no, she's no, owned it. no. Yeah, it was like yeah. it was like one Insta post. Yeah, so Kylie. she paid. Yeah, yeah. So she paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars for Kylie to wear the waist trainer for one photo, um, and supposedly the sales from that one post was over a million dollars. So it was three hundred percent on that, and then the brand went uh, ridiculously crazy after that. And I think she might have sold the company. I, um, I believe she did. I did, too, and she yeah. helps launch multiple companies um, since then. She's got a real interesting strategy, what she does with launching companies, if you want me to tell you what she does. Definitely. Um, so she's she's launched, she had obviously Waist Trainer, then she went into, was it, there was a protein brand, then she did the, one of the. Um, Lolly boxes that started. Okay. Um, again, there's quite a few out there at the moment. Uh, apologize. I can't remember the one one that she shipped the, the chocolates and the lollies. She launched one of those. But one of the strategies she does, because she came from a successful name, is she will launch a company and then they'll do a worldwide giveaway. And I shit you not, it'll be like twenty to $40,000 worth of gifts they'll give away. Yeah. And they'll do a big uh, uh, Instagram marketing campaign to the expected audience going, here's this giveaway, and they'll run that for about six weeks. And literally the social media will go from like zero followers to like a couple of hundred thousand followers in the six weeks. Uh, And then after that, then they run the business. So Mm. because she's come in, so I've seen it multiple times with companies that she's helped launch. So she'll go back to all these brands that resonate and they'll send like, um, she had a there was a makeup. I'm sure there was a makeup company she had as well. So she got all the top end Kardashian makeup, and I can't even I don't, don't know what other brand makeup. <laughs> but she literally had a table this size filled with uh, gifts that was given from the brands, and then they went and did a massive mark a guerrilla marketing campaign off that, and it just took the, the that page from there to there, gets it launched, and then she steps. I think then she steps away. Nice. I think this is where <laughs> the the perception of social media has gotten so messed up, right? Yeah. You've on on one hand you've got the the look at me generation, mm-hmm. which we're often called <laughs> millennials, and now yeah. the Gen Zs are, yeah. are getting it right. The whole look at me generation. But when you actually think about how how social media has made it easier for anyone to connect with their fam- favorite celebrities mm-hmm. or um, using the term influencer as someone who influences behavior yep. or, you know, um, educators, teachers, the greatest, you know, I, I can do one tweet and I can connect to mm-hmm. Robert Kiyosaki if I yep. wanted, right? Or, 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 you know, if I got lucky because he probably gets a lot. But, <laughs> you know, even, even with my own mentors, it allows me to stay connected. It allows me to constantly be learning. I know that Anytime I catch up with people, half of them already know everything I'm doing anyway, <laughs> yeah. right? But but that means I don't have to have the same conversation 20 different mm-hmm. times because I do one post and they, they already know that. They're able to get my ideas and we're able to share ideas more easier. Mm-hmm. And if we look at what the, the reason humanity is at where we're at 
mm-hmm. is simply because of the ease of sharing ideas. I mean, another crazy one that came out of from COVID was looking at different different models of running businesses. So um, Jason Derulo was the first, I, I believe Jason Derulo was the first one that did this. I could be mistaken. He might have been first or second one, uh, other than him stealing a, a New Zealander's song and then getting sued for it, and then they made a song together, right? <laughs> the, the, the Auckland, I'm um, sure he's the Auckland bass guy. That's that big Jason Derulo song. Um, but um, COVID hit, and there was no concerts. Yeah. Um, but then obviously TikTok is uh, TikTok was music. Musically became TikTok, and then TikTok was picking up. So what he realized is that I could go live on TikTok, and people can send me gifts. So on TikTok, if you go live, people can send you little lava or sort of thumbs up, and it's like one cent, yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. So what he went and did is he went and did a live concert on his TikTok to his millions of followers, and literally turned around and I think it was a couple of hundred thousand dollars that he made from sitting at home doing an hour stint, not going anywhere, not paying for a studio, not paying for a stadium, and still pocket. I mean, for him, a couple of hundred thousand dollars might not be much. But I for, don't know. But if Jason I don't know, Derulo, right? maybe, maybe did it. Well, but, well, yeah, but when you think about like margins, right? Yeah. So when we think about a massive concert, yeah. there is so much cost involved. I oh, have no idea costs, yeah. what he'd actually take, take home. Yeah. And all the money and all the rest. Yeah. yeah. So that was one of the models of showing that through social media, the access to people, how quickly, and then realizing that you can make money. You might not get all of it, but how easy you can get the money. So I know a lot of content creators. I did it before I bulldozed my house last year to rebuild. I would sit in my bar on a Friday night. Um, I had a bar that I I'd formed out of, and I would put music on. I would have sit there and have a beer, and I would go live on TikTok. And for like an hour or so, I would chat into people, and every time it was like $3, $5, $6, I'd make at the end. Now, $6 an hour is not going to change my life. But it's a Friday night at 10 o'clock when I'm watching Netflix anyway. Why not sit there, have a drink, talk to people, build the network, and actually get a couple of revenue? And as my number will grow, obviously the percentage of that return will come up as well. And I, I think that's really where the real value is. You know, yeah. if, if we think about it, really is that that building networks. I know I've had people I've never met before but yeah. who, who follow me on socials. Yeah. And they'll all of a sudden just reach out and say, I want to invest in you, right? Yeah. And so now it's, okay, yeah, I never, I think I made a dollar for YouTube <laughs> at the time of filming. Yeah. Only just got recently monetized, all the effort I put in. But the amount of money I made because I'd built that authority mm-hmm. and I, I had people who aligned with the ideas and would then invest in me, yeah. that's where the real value is. So I want to thank you so much. We need to wrap up. Um, but for those of you who have been watching, um, obviously with every video I do, I am giving away 100 USDT. So make sure you do like, subscribe, and leave a comment down the bottom. Uh, what was it that you really took away from this video? What can you be introducing into your life? How can you reframe your perception of social media? And of course, jump over and give Laura follow Lawrence how do they connect with you uh, so yeah just Lawrence Lots on any social platform that is out there whether it's Facebook Instagram TikTok Snapchat LinkedIn you'll find me anywhere out there so just reach out and uh, say hi and um, let me know you saw me on the show I'd love to know that or in if you have any questions around uh, social media. And just a little side note, as I'm to the end of 2022 this year, I have still help and support and mentoring people around social media for free. Uh, in January, Karen is taking me on his wing and he's like, enough of this free <laughs> stuff. So you still got like a time of recording. You still got about six weeks to use and abuse me for free. Other than after that, there's going to be a cost point. Oh, now you've stitched me up. I need to get this out immediately then. <laughs> awesome. Cheers. And for you guys, Keep doing awesome, and we'll see you on the next show.